When I was just starting out as a dog trainer, I once witnessed something really intriguing. This was a long time ago. I was at someone's house and a small child was interacting with the adults and misbehaved in some way. One of the parents promptly asked the child to go to the naughty corner. I remember seeing the child's reaction to this and wondering what was going on. Was this a helpful way to educate or teach the child? Enter the concept of a timeout. How does it work? Should we use it with dogs, children and other learners? It is Jose here from Train Me Please. Let's go. Okay. Roll the definition. A timeout is a temporary removal or reduction of access to positive reinforcers, which happens contingent on a problematic behavior. The positive reinforcers in these situations tend to be social or food reinforcers. A timeout is a negative punishment procedure that, when correctly applied, can reduce undesirable behavior with less harmful side effects than positive punishment. There are three types of timeouts, exclusionary, non-exclusionary, and isolation. Exclusionary ones usually involve stopping the training session or interaction by moving the dog or the human somewhere else without access to positive reinforcers, but in the same area of the house. If a puppy bites our hands, we can move past the playpen to the other side of the living room and the puppy loses access to us. Isolation timeouts involve the removal of the dog or human to a different location in the house where access to reinforcers is prevented. As an example, when a dog plays too rough and bites our hands, we can move them to another division in the house. Non-exclusionary timeouts imply that we remove reinforcers without moving the dog or human from the training session. For example, we might pause the training session and access to reinforcers for 15 seconds and then resume it. In the child example from earlier, the kind of timeout used was an isolation timeout. And we'll get back to it a little later on. In my professional career working with dog guardians, the most common application of a timeout that I see is with puppies biting our hands. The puppy displays the unwanted behavior. We say enough in a neutral tone of voice and move out of that location or move the puppy somewhere else. For a timeout to be efficient, factors such as its duration, consistency and timing are very important as is teaching the dog what is expected of them. In terms of duration, most specialists would agree that it should be a few seconds or maybe a minute or two, but never more than that. In terms of consistency, it is better to stick to a given strategy and avoid changing around how we act on a certain behavior. Timing-wise, it is important to ensure that the problematic behavior is promptly followed by the timeout. One of the greatest limitations of a timeout is that it does not teach the dog what to do. To counteract this, the desirable behaviors should be positively reinforced. The timeout procedure decreases the frequency of the problematic behavior, and the differential reinforcement increases the frequency of the alternative behavior that replaces it. If we simply negatively punish socially inappropriate behavior, the dog will have to guess what the desirable behavior is. That could lead to sustained punishment and frustration. This is why it is so important to positively reinforce the behaviors we want to see more of in the future. When the puppy interacts with their toys instead of our hands, when they do that instead of bothering the older dog, we should be proactive about reinforcing that behavior. We should try to create behavior loops that lead to reinforcement and not punishment. Another limitation of the use of timeouts is that it is unlikely to be effective with behaviors that are triggered by sensorial stimulation. If there is a certain outside noise that is making the dog bark, moving the dog to another area of the house where they can still hear the noise is unlikely to be effective. Another small detail to consider is that sometimes in order to start the timeout we might be required to interact with the dog which might reinforce the problematic behavior. 
So, what are the risks of using timeouts? I will cover that in just a second. But first, could you please click the like button below so that more people can find this content? Cute photo as a thanks. Timeouts can generate strong emotional responses. I remember very clearly the child on the isolation timeout looking extremely sad, disappointed and confused. As for dogs, they might start crying, barking, destroying stuff or eliminating in the wrong location. This is more likely if isolation is used and even more so if the dog is taken to an unfamiliar area. If the frustration is based on the lack of social proximity to humans, the dog might only calm down when access to them is reinstated. Some dogs might even resort to aggression if we try to move them away from a location full of reinforcers. If a timeout generates any kind of stress or anxiety, an alternative behavior modification procedure should be used. Does that mean that without stress and anxiety, we are good to go with timeouts? Well, actually, not really. See, the likelihood of unwanted side effects here is a real possibility, even if we don't see anything obvious externally. This means that less aversive methods are required to be implemented before ever considering timeouts. I've said this a million times here on the channel. Good antecedent arrangement, or in other words, how we set up the environment or situation, as well as positive reinforcement methods should be our go-to strategy. It would be incredibly rare for me to consider going outside of those two behavior modification options. If, and this is a big if, I would really, really need to, I would probably consider differential reinforcement strategies before timeouts. I hope that makes sense. If you watched the video to this point, could you leave me a comment below with the keyword behavior? That will let me know that you watched the video to this point. Hey, uh, I'm really sorry to interrupt. I really like your content. Is there any way that I can make a contribution and support the work that you do? Um, I guess that an easy, informal way to do that would be to just buy me a coffee or a few coffees. I can leave a link in the description below. Okay. Next, watch this one here. I am sure you will like it. É isso, pessoal. Até a próxima.